Yes, good evening. Tottenham 2, Fulham 0, top of the league by two points. Another clean sheet, Sonny goal, Madison goal. Hoiberg's in the starting lineup, no Bissouma. Yep. Um, as to be expected? As to be expected, yeah. The only the only change that I would have preferred to have seen was maybe Richarlison rested and if fully fit, we don't know how ready they were. Obviously not match fit, but Brendan Johnson or Brian Hill on the left-hand side. I've grown a little bit frustrated with Richarlison over the last few games. Wasteful. Looks like he's got he's battling kind of demons in his head with regarding his confidence, Henry. And I just feel like today was another one where he had two or three opportunities. To be fair, his first shot that he took from distance and it whipped around the post. That, that was that was pretty half good. Half a yard wide, half a yard wide. But the second one, the second half. Uh, it can't, it just can't keep half. happening though. How many times is it? It's is so it, wasteful. Is it, is it just over the bar or just wide or? at the keeper like if a clinical t player takes that he's in the back of the net but I don't think his fitness is all there either after about 60 minutes he looked absolutely gassed I don't really you don't usually see Premier League footballers that should be match fit with their hands on their knees after the hour he looked like he was begging to come off I don't think he enjoyed it tonight and uh, I thought that Anne should have maybe brought on one of the replacements a little bit sooner but look hey ho it is what it is and we got the we got the three points but listen against other teams you know, you, you, you're going to need to take advantage of the opportunities that are presented to you. I don't think Richarlison's doing it enough. So for me, it's a really ongoing frustration. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the first uh, 15 minutes, I thought we were very good. Um, I thought we, we started well. We come out of the traps well. We had a couple of chances. They had that head off from the corner from Paulina. Vicario, yeah, amazing. amazing save. Gets right across. Um, and when you think about him as well, all the other goalkeepers in the league, um, like we said in your video, Sanchez at uh, Chelsea, Onana at Man United, Raya at Arsenal, everyone's making errors. And he seems to be an absolute yeah. steal. 17 million euros. Yeah. Unbelievable, right? You know, yeah. I, I had a couple of little a little higgles in that game where he passed it out from the back and he went to another player. But at that stage, the game was kind of a bit already done. But I thought it was very good. The goal, the first goal comes from, uh, ball goes into Son. He drops the shoulder. And an excellent finish to get his seventh goal of the season. First game, first game at home where he scored. What did you make of, of the goal? Yeah, a typical Sonny finish. I, mean, I say typical like it's happened. It shouldn't happen as much as it does. But when you think of Sonny, you think of him knocking the ball to the right with his right foot and pinging it into the top bins. And he did it again today. Wonderful finish from our view, from where I was standing. It was perfect to see the ball, the flight of it. Great performance from him, a captain's performance. Like, I didn't think it was easy for Tottenham today. I thought it was comfortable. I thought like we, I didn't really ever feel like Fulham. Ever like, felt that we were going to lose the game? I never felt like we were going to lose the game. I thought there was periods where Fulham had chances. I thought down their left hand side, as I said in the pre preview on my channel, I felt that Robinson and Willian, you know, they're good players that, that can sort of spread spread the play nicely down there, and they can they can come at Tottenham with Pedro Porro maybe being caught in the inverted you know, position. But I thought Pedro Porro played really well. But generally speaking, sorry, back to the question. I just thought that. You know, I think that Sonny, Sonny put in a captain's performance in an otherwise... I felt like the game was a little bit frustrating to watch. It was... It start, out, stop, start, stop. Start, stop. And then when we got to... When we went to up the whole... Like, there was no more desire to do anything from either team. You know, it's a Monday night. It's a long time to get up here. It's a late night. So, you want to see 100% effort. And I didn't... I wasn't that impressed with... Like I say, the kind of gusto that I was expecting from the team. But ultimately, we did everything we needed to, get, to, get, needed to, do, to do to get the three points. And that's all that matters. You know? Was there anything in that first half which you, you think, oh, we can't do that in the next game? Did Fulham really do anything in that first half to make you think, oh? Because I, I, I thought we were comfortable. I, I didn't think yeah, like, yeah. like, I thought Romero was, was, was the best round of pitch. I think that first half, he was absolutely unreal. Yeah. As well as Van der Ven. And I've been very critical, him, especially on this <laughs> channel, your channel. Every Tottenham channel I'm on, I've been very critical. But this season, he's had one yellow card all season. This is a guy that last year was flying in 20, 30 yards out of, out of his defensive line, taking people out. And Van der Ven is probably part of the reason for that. He's got a calm, composed head. But him and Van der Ven, your doggy and Porro, that first time, I, I, we could have played that game another five or six times. Yeah. I don't think Fulham would have scored. No, I think Van der Ven's pace gets us out of problems. We can commit ourselves into situations where you might find Pedro Porro playing next to Hoybier tonight, getting a little bit out of position, and then you see when you do lose the ball, because there were a lot of sloppy passes. I don't want to come across like I'm totally negative on the ball, so I'm really not. Well, if you can't see what uh, Levy's doing, mate, <laughs> can off Danny Emirates. I don't want to come across like I'm negative, but I'm just calling out the areas that were frustrating for me. There was sloppiness, and when the, those transitions happened, the ball was popped down, to, down into the width, into the corners, as you'd expect any team to do against Tottenham, and you either had a scenario where Romero was getting across and just cleaning it up, or in the scenarios where there was a lot of space, then you saw Mickey van der Ven's pace coming across, covering both the left and the right, 
the guy is going to get us out of a hell of a lot of trouble this season because I've not seen a player with that size, that physical presence, that timing of his tackle, coupled with the pace that he gets. There's not many players that are going to beat him in the foot race, and it's a beautiful thing to see. What um, se second half comes out, we, we kind of started well. I think uh, Vicario made a save around about the 55th minute. And then obviously Madison gets his goal. What did you make of Madison today? I thought other than his goal, he did some nice things. He played a lot deeper today. Yeah. He wasn't really hovering that number 10 row. He kind of did what Harry Kane done and come deep to create. Took his goal very well though, didn't he? Yeah, his goal was fantastic. I think he could have had a second one. I don't really know, can't really remember who. Madison obviously in the second half kind of found his way into some space. Got a one-two. That was, is that when he was pressing right at the end? Pressing right at the end. Brilliant press, by the way. Our press in the second half was absolutely sensational. It might have taken 45 seconds to, for it to figure out with an opportunity, but yeah. it happened a few times. Madison gets the ball, and then Sonny and him get in each other's way. Either of them could have taken it. Neither of them did. Probably could have gone three nil up, and then the bet would have been null and void anyway. So you're lucky about that one. But for me, uh, I think Madison was... Um, yeah, again, I thought he was... Good, not great. Good, not great. But I think that was you can make that same assessment for a lot of the players tonight. If you were playing, if we put in this performance against a top seven team, Aston Villa, a Wall, those sort of teams we've got coming up next, then I think that we're going to have a bit of a problem. I think Tottenham need to not rest on our laurels. I'm not. I'm not walking away from this game overjoyed with the performance. I'm, I'm walking away delighted with the top of the table, delighted three with points, what the three clean points. Sheet. All that matters in the end of the day. But I do think that we were wasteful. Do you think it was a bit of a lethargic performance? Yeah. It was like kind of like we've got back from Inter. We were like this against Sheffield United. Yeah, exactly. That was also after the international break, and then all exactly. of a sudden, second, third, fourth game, we started clicking in. But um, yeah. you know, I, I, I thought as a performance, for Romero was the best round of pitch. Romero was what, what, what did you make of him? Because you Brilliant. even texted me saying Rolls Royce Romero. That's the level we're getting to. And Rolls Royce is going to get yellow cards, mate. Like, uh, this the guy. This guy is looking the best I've seen him. Better than his first like Fleury in a, in a Tottenham shirt two and a half years ago whenever it was two and a half seasons ago uh, I think he's back to his best I think he's thriving playing in the, in the kind of leadership team and he's playing with a player behind him in Vicario who he knows in the on the off chance on the, in the odd moment when we are going to give away a goal scoring opportunity you've got Vicario there that can absolutely pluck, you know, put out a, an absolutely sensational save and next to him you've got Van der Ven who like I say a minute ago has got the pace for days to get yourself out of any situation when you really progress yeah. the line for me, look, I think that Fulham sort of really structured themselves quite well today, albeit they don't have the, the end product, but the way that they compressed the game so that they had a really high line defensively and a really sort of deep line offensively, their entire team was sort of spread within about 15 metres of the pitch around that kind of halfway line. And the only, the only uh, concern or the only kind of critique I would have of Romero and Van der Ven during the game is that in that first half and in the second half, there were moments where the entire team, the entire both teams were, were squished into such a small area of the pitch that there could have been more long diagonal balls. Toby Adeviro would have had an absolute field day. Oh, that sort of Hoiberg system. made about four, three or four passes that game, which was right out to uh, Richardson, which I thought, okay, that there was so much space. And if we had, if we had Brendan Johnson on that side, I think he would have destroyed yeah. that fullback yeah. because. The, the Kulazewski Robertson matchup was was at times Good. Robertson got the better of Kulu and vice versa. But Richarlison, I don't know, I can't remember who it wasn't Tete who played out there. It was um, Castagna. Yeah, Castagna, the old Leicester fullback. I thought, I thought it was awful, mate. Yeah, I thought he terrible. gave the ball away a few times. And if Richarlison had confidence and was actually a good technical footballer, we would have got in behind there more more than one shot. That was when we needed Son. And then obviously, if we had Kane, yeah. Son would have blitzed him every single time for pace. And to be fair, mate, whilst I'm criticising Romero and Van der Ven for not when they had that that time that on the ball they could have picked those passes for that to happen they have to look up and see one of the forwards making a run and there wasn't any deliberate runs into the channels and there was so much space behind it so i think that you have to kind of it's very congested in the middle so it? congested yeah. so so congested and that's why i was frustrated about in the first half if you're going to see that whole the whole kind of the whole game being played in about 20 square meters then you need to you need to see players like Hoybier, who i thought had a really good game i thought he grew into the game but in the first half to start with he wasn't spreading the ball quickly enough, neither was Pape. So okay, is that lack of fitness? Maybe, and a little bit of lack of, lack of, definitely a lack of match fitness. I don't want to come across like I'm super negative. I feel like I am. I'm calling out all of what was wrong today. What's sound like me today. Yeah, I don't, but I don't mean to be. Um, I just, I'm just terrified of two hours. You've got roles here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm calling the Tartar race, and you're calling out the negativity. No, and I, just, I, I, I just think that the, the I think that the, the results are superb. We're sat at the top of the table, but I just, I don't think the performances, today at least, 
I don't think the performance was spectacular. I think you have to be honest and call it out for what it is. I thought we got the job done against a really poor team. But if that same performance was put on against a better team, like Aston Villa that are coming to town soon, like Crystal Palace, not Crystal Palace, next Chelsea that are next that are finding some form. Tottenham need to up then their Villa, level, and we've got Wolves in between as well. Wolves in between. Tottenham need to up their level, get a little bit more energy from out of the uh, out of the performances if we're going to come away and stay unbeaten in those games as well. Well, d just a couple more questions before we finish. Uh, your doggy potential injury as well as uh, Sarsar Torre. Um, we'll start with your doggy. He, um, he went off. Uh, what was it around? Oh, we went off at the 50th minute? Oh, 55, 55, 55, 55, 55th minute, yeah. Minutes, Just before I was about to get my clean sheet bonus on fantasy. <laughs> Typical. Um, what, what did you make of, of your doggy, uh, his performance? Good, good, good performance. Good. He's always solid. I think he, he, he handles himself. He's very strong. He's capable. Um, I, don't, I don't really remember him being involved too much going forward. I, remember, I think I've, I've had more recollection of Pedro Porra being more directly involved down the right than the new doggy was. But he handled his business defensively, and look, he's, he's, ne he's never going to concern me. I'm always comfortable when I see you yeah, yeah, on the yeah, left-hand yeah, side. Yeah. Don't know yeah. how I'm going to feel if, you know, if Crystal Palace are coming to town or we're going to them next Friday. If they had the likes of Elise in their team, I know they don't. And there's a, and there's a different, different and Edward, Then am I that comfortable thinking that Emerson Royale is going to be playing left back? You know, this was a look, palace of last year with Zaha, Alix, and Eze. It would be, yeah. Be, yeah, Zaha would have him on toast yeah. at Royale. But similar to what he did to Tangango. Remember when he rattled rout, him up, rolled him up, and he got sent off? Yeah, look, I, I thought Emerson did really well when he came on generally. But like I say, I don't think there was that much of a threat. I don't think you know, Fulham possessed that much of any kind of killer instinct. A lot of opportunities that are half, half baked, but not really doing much with it. And I think that, that's what I say. You, know, you walk away kind of going, another day at the office, pretty simple and comfortable but well, I am well, worried well, that's Sar. Well, yeah, if, if the dog is out for any length of time we don't know the state, the state of his injury and Pape Sar, but what I, thought, I actually thought Oli Skip came on did really well he made a fantastic challenge down the obviously where we're sitting down the other end yeah. I think it was on Willian at the time absolutely unbelievable yeah, challenge from Oli Skip. Yeah, I thought he had a really good performance and um, you know, look if he has to play Pape Sar's out for you know, we've got we've got Benton Core coming back soon so hopefully that's you know, not, we're not going to need to rely on Hoybier and or Pape Sarr. They're saying he's going to be back or, fit yeah. for Chelsea. Yeah, is he? Yeah, that's what they're saying. Twitter was all the IT. Everyone's an ITK now, aren't they? ITK, well, know. yeah. Um, <laughs> if you can't see what Emery Wright TV is doing, you can help off down to League Gunner. <laughs> um, last thing I'm going to finish on. Palace, Wolves, Chelsea and Villa are next four. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's in that order. Palace. Palace, Chelsea, Wolves, Wolves Villa. Villa. Um, we said... On top and takes on Sunday, yep. we'd win our next five. I said I said twelve from fifteen, didn't I? Oh, no, I, no, I said you yeah, said, said fifteen from eighteen. 15 from we didn't talk about the Man city, city game. game. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Are you still yeah. holding the same? Yep. The same. Yeah, levels? but we have to we have to improve. I thought the levels today weren't good. But enough. the same, like I said, we, we played the exact same way against Sheffield United, and then we went out and beat. Who was the next game? Liverpool. Oh, we then beat Liverpool. Oh, Luton. Oh, Liverpool then Luton. Yeah. Yeah. So. It, it, it kind of seems when we seem to really get going, a break comes. Yeah. A break comes. And isn't there another international break November. next month as well? Yeah. It's, just, it's just absolutely typical. But you think we'll beat Palace? Yeah, I do, yeah. I just think Palace have got no firepower. And they're difficult to break down, even though I don't have much respect for Mark Leahy. I know everyone thinks he's awesome. I, I think he's a bit You've got an cool. agenda. I do have an agenda. And an agenda against Jonathan David. And a massive agenda against Jonathan And Aston Villa. <laughs> Listen, it is what it is. I am who I am. But I do think that we'll, be, we'll have enough to get past them. I don't think they're going to be too threatening up front. I'd say then they've got their best players are out injured and you know they've got 11, 11 top first team or squad members out. I think we'll have enough to get past them. I'm a little bit more worried about Wolves. Um, Especially with Pedro Neto. And if, we, if, if your doggy stood out and they put um, Royale at left back or whatever it is, that's going to be a tough game. I, I would be more inclined to bring in, um, this is going to sound bizarre, but I'd be more inclined to bring in Phillips and put Van der Ven out there. Yeah. Because okay. Pedro Neto is one of the trickiest. On the left, on the left back. Yeah, he's, if, if, if the dog is out. He's yeah. one of the trickiest yeah. wingers in the league right now. He, he's a, he had two massive injuries. He's come in. He's got six assists this season, uh, and they got Huang as well, the Korean strike, which was someone know very well. And you know that, that's kind of like their Madison and, and Son for them. Mm -hmm. um, but just quickly, sure, most people find you. Sports talk show every day, um, or uh, yeah, hanging around. Uh, Emery Art TV. Get over to Shameless as well, right? We'll see you all soon, people. We're in a title race. Come on, you